And while we miss Brody Meyer check, Jeremy Howe is probably the perfect suitor to fulfill that role that, that's been left by Brody Meyer check. He's a defender coming along, coming over as a forward who has obviously forward craft, but is cognizant of what defenders want to do from an intercepting standpoint. Hey guys, just quickly, before we get stuck into this preview between Collingwood and the Eagles, I just want to give a massive thanks to everyone that supported the Nick Dacos documentary. It went above and beyond how far and how greatly it could perform this early on. And with that being said, I do just want to make a special announcement here. I will be doing a Scott Pendlebury documentary and that will be released on the 2nd of June. So put pencil that into your calendar. Subscribe if you haven't already. I don't ask of that too often, but if you haven't subscribed and you're a frequent viewer, then just give us a sub. And yeah, let's get stuck into the, the Pies vs Eagles. A bit of a war of attrition. There's a massive injury list on both sides of the table. So we'll, we'll address those first, which will segue us into the rest of the video. Brody Majacek will be missed for up to three weeks thanks to a, a hamstring issue that he endured during the game against Carlton. Uh, he played through it as, as a true warrior that he is and got through the game, but obviously the repercussions have, have been dealt with and now three weeks on the, the sidelines. So he gets a, a rest throughout the, the middle of the season. Dugowie still out with a groin. Word is he'll be more likely next week to, to make an appearance. And Tom Mitchell had a bout of appendicitis, was uh, hospitalized, so that will keep him out this week. Jamie Elliott, there's a bit of a, I guess, a word going around that he's managing or dealing with lingering back issues, which is concerning because that is something that has hampered his career and plagued him throughout the entirety of his career, really, to be fair. So it'll be interesting to see if Collingwood err on the side of caution and give him a break. Bo McCreary, concussion. As obviously, we saw that in the first quarter. It was such a shame because he started in the middle and everyone had been begging for Bo to be thrown in the middle. And obviously, with Jordan Dugowie being absent and Tom Mitchell, we needed a bit of power and speed and, and, and pressure from someone like Bo to, to roll through the middle. And I thought he had started really well. It was such a shame to see him be ruled out for the rest of the game unfortunately, due to the concussion protocol. So hopefully he overcomes those symptoms and can be back on the field sooner rather than later. And then lastly, Lockie Schultz is out for one week due to a suspension. So quite a lengthy list at the moment to be dealing with. But in saying that, West Coast are not without their own troubles. They have Jake Waterman, who is out with concussion. I have allocated a portion of this video to discuss him and I'm going to do that despite him not being available and then Elliot Yo, unfortunately dealing with a recurring groin inju injury once again unfortunate for just true AFL footy lovers to see him out of the game it would have made for a much more enticing contest but not to be it is what it is and then Noah Long one of their youngsters is out with a PCL, so it could be out for anywhere between 4 to 12 weeks, depending on the severity of that PCL injury. Looking back at last time Collingwood and West Coast met last year, Collingwood ended up winning 57 to 120 at Optus Stadium. West Coast got obliterated in the turnover category. I think they conceded 71 points in particular. And it's hard to pay too much attention to what's happened in that game because what West Coast are now versus what they were, particularly during that period of that season is chalk and cheese, but I still think it's relevant to mention the, the recent matchups and, and really build a narrative from there. Our top performers in that game were two of our key forwards in Brody Majacek and Ash Johnson, both kicking three goals each. Obviously, Brody Majacek not going to be present for this game. Ash Johnson has been in the VFL for quite some time now in 2024. However, there has been a role change for him in the VFL, which may see him thrusted into the AFL this week against the Eagles, but I'll talk to that in just a moment. I guess what might be a little bit more relevant to this matchup is the game that preceded last year where Collingwood met West Coast at Marvel Stadium in 2022 where they kicked 14 goals to three behinds and Collingwood, I think, were 10 goals, 14 behinds. And I just remember that day. It was, it was quite an eerily precarious, ominous sort of vibe going into that game, walking to Marvel Stadium, it was a Saturday afternoon, the, the energy was just off from a Collingwood fan standpoint, the, the, the loudness, the anticipation, all these things that sort of interject into what happens on the field just weren't right and that's what ended up happening, we ended up losing a game that we should have won and then 
that was one of the only games that West Coast won for the uh, from memory. So it ended up being quite a disappointing loss in the grand scheme of things. Hopefully we don't get a replay of that on Sunday. West Coast played Essendon last week at Optus Stadium and fell short by one goal in what was a very entertaining game and a very competitive game against an Essendon side that Collingwood only drew against a couple weeks ago. So if that's anything to go by, despite who's not going to be on that field, I think it's still going to be a relatively competitive game, even if the scoreboard might not indicate that by the time the game's over. I think we have to be very attentive to this as a, as a team and be ready to engage in a big battle. You've got Harley Reid, who is probably someone who's going to want to take some numbers on the field. He's probably want to, he'll probably want to fend off a Nick Dacos and a Scott Pendlebury and add that to his hit list. West Coast have been great when it comes to scoring from stoppages. I think against Essendon, they scored 39 points while only conceding 23 from that source against Essendon. But what, them, what let them down was their turnover game. They conceded 54 points while only scoring 32 points going their way. And against West Coast, between Collingwood and West Coast last year, Collingwood really took advantage of the turnover game. So hopefully we can emulate that and bring up some old demons or, or existing demons for West Coast when it comes to the turnover game that they're struggling with at the moment. And that, that probably talks to the, the skill level, the distribution, ball use, as you know, your team gets better with the ball, a better system, more confidence, that turnover game will reduce and not be as profound as it is now. You know, With a bunch of young kids in West Coast side in particular, turnovers are going to be inherent in the game until they develop maturity at AFL level. That's just the way it goes. Tim Kelly was the highest rated player for the game between Essendon and West Coast. He collected 29 disposals. He had nine clearances got while going at 75% disposal efficiency. And he had a game high, 14 contested possessions. So he's going to be a player to watch who's running hot at the moment when we face them on Sunday at Marvel Stadium. Obviously, we don't need to speak too much about this guy because he gets enough wraps around the league right now. And that's Harley Reid. He's an absolute monster in the contest. He wants to take numbers. He's got players on his hit list. He's currently averaging, he's currently averaging nine contested possessions per game with five clearances. And I think his biggest asset is just his aura and his power and speed. He sort of reminds me of a younger Nat Fife who can jump and, and he's strong and in the contest and just has this, I guess, energy that, that permeates around him and, and people really feed off that. And, and West Coast, as a team and as a supporter base, are definitely feeding off that right now. It just goes to show what happens when you bring in a highly touted youngster who is also fearless and is not afraid of any matchup that comes before. Unfortunately for West Coast, Elliot Yo will not be available for the game on Sunday. He has been a top 10 performer in the league, back to his usual best. And thankfully for the Collingwood Army, we won't, we won't have to deal with him. Collingwood will need to keep a close eye on Jeremy Govan and Tom Barras. They have both been outstanding in the season so far. Jeremy McGovern's finally be able to overcome some ongoing soft tissue niggles and it's great to see him on the field performing at the level that we know that he has always been capable of. As I said before, unfortunately Jake Quarterman will not be available for the game as well. I do just want to note that he has literally carried the West Coast Eagles forward line on his back in the absence of Oscar Allen. So a silver lining in Allen's absence has been the the meteoric rise of Waterman in the forward line. He's always had potential to play to the level that he's playing at right now. I'm not sure if he's, we all could foresee that, but we definitely knew he had some sort of talent there that was unutilized yet, I guess. And I think he's averaging three goals a game and taking nearly three contested marks per game, which is top five in the league. So West Coast have really found someone in Jake Waterman and maybe they don't have to be so desperate for another key forward to pair up with Oscar Allen. I think they were looking at Logan McDonald, who is initially, originally from Perth. So a really a win-win situation for West Coast when it comes to that right now. Looking at the VFL impressions, Collingwood came up against Southport in Gold Coast, losing 101 to 74. Pies were spanked in most stats on the day. One of the most alarming ones was the fact that Southport were able to get 63 inside 50s to Collingwood's 36. That's probably one of the biggest ones that springs out of the page. Jack Bytel, however, is quietly building an impressive VFL start to his season. Obviously, joining Collingwood in the supplementary selection period late in the preseason, along with Lucky Sullivan and Josh Eyre. 
He's a big body midfielder. He collected 27 disposals, had five tackles for the game. And with the in current injury woes for the Pies, particularly in the midfield, I don't see an AFL Collingwood debut for Jack Bytel being too far away. Finlay McRae continues to do what he does best at VFL level, and that's collect disposals, 25 of them for the weekend, along with four tackles and nine clearances. I feel like it's now or never for Fly McRae to entrust in Finlay and give him the keys to the engine room on the weekend against Sunday against an injury depleted West Coast while we're also having our own troubles. If he doesn't get selected, then maybe the writing is on the wall for Finlay McRae to seek an opportunity elsewhere. He had an amazing preseason, but probably been deprived of a, of a genuine opportunity. Obviously, we saw last week Lockie Sullivan got the nod ahead. Rather than bring in Finlay, they also gave Bo McCurry an opportunity there, but now he's not going to be available. So it's got to be Finlay McRae who comes in next, right? Or do they go for someone like Jack Bytel, which will tr well and truly sink the ship that of optimism for, for Finlay McRae this year. Joe Richards is also continuing to impress us at VFL level, kicking another couple goals against Southport. With Bo McCreary being out with concussion and Jamie Elliott being a question mark, this might be the opportunity that presents to Joe Richards to have an opportunity to debut at AFL level. He's been our leading goal scorer in the VFL and has had some big moments in big games, particularly, I think it was against Essendon or Brisbane where he kicked six. I think it was Brisbane, he kicked six. So there's no reason, his, his form definitely warrants an opportunity. It's just a matter of, yeah, is does his role as a small forward fit what Collingwood need right now in the absence of certain players that aren't available this week? And here we go back to the conversation that pretty much was consistent across the whole preseason was... Does AJ, Reef McInnes, or Nathan Kruger play this weekend? I think two of, two of three of them could play this weekend. Reef McInnes collected 16 disposals, kicked two goals, and is a great pressure player within his own right. Does he fill the gap that Bo McCreary leaves, or maybe even Jamie Elliott's hole? And then Ash Johnson has been playing in the back line. He's been, he's been given a role in the back line in the VFL. So if we decide, and we've, we've heard that Jeremy Howe has been training forward line this weekend, so with that in consideration, does that mean Jeremy Howe swings forward for the game and then Ash Johnson plays in the back line? It seems like Collingwood really do want to give him another chance whether it be in the back line or the forward line. They, they can see the potential he has. It's just a matter of getting that to translate at AFL level. Nathan Kruger in his first game back was quiet with five disposals and one goal, but he's the type of player you can throw into the lion's den at AFL level and expect him to bring you just complete tenacity and, and cause issues in the back line for Jeremy McGovern and Tom Barras, the back line being West Coast back line and Collingwood's forward line, of course. So the question that always presents is how do Collingwood win? First and foremost, and I'll say this in most previews, is just bring the heat, bring the pressure. Collingwood are averaging a league high 75 tackles for the year. And on the other end, Eagles are bottom of the ladder when it comes to tackles applied. So it's something there that we can really take advantage of when it comes to bringing the heat early and, and applying tackles. Collingwood will need to nullify West Coast scoring from stoppages, but similar to Carlton's profile last week, while West Coast are really good at scoring from stoppage, they also concede quite a bit from stoppage. So with that in mind, I'm keen to see Nick Dacos to continue developing his knack around the stoppage contest. The two goals that he scored against Carlton were directly from a stoppage contest, so I'm really keen to see more of that on Sunday. Obviously, Elliot Yo will be sorely missed when it comes to these contests. He's a stoppage bull, a contested beast, but in saying that, we still have to be mindful that Tim Kelly and Harley Reid will still be there around these contests on Sunday, so we'll look for people like Pendles, Jack Crisp, and Finlay McRae, if he gets the, the nod, to, to do a defensive job on these players. Jack Chris was absolutely outstanding against Carlton. He collected 17 contested possessions. I don't think we've we've spoken about him enough since that game, and he really deserves his flowers. I think he earned some coaches' votes and probably would have taken the majority of them if it wasn't for a certain Nick Dacos. And while we miss Brody Meyercheck, Jeremy Howe is probably the perfect suitor to fulfill that role that, that's been left by Brody Meyercheck. He's a defender coming along coming over as a forward who has obviously forward craft, but is cognizant of what defenders want to do from an intercepting standpoint. And who better for someone like Jeremy Howe to come across and do a job 
on someone like McGovern and Barras and maybe kicking a couple snags while he's at it. And that gap that Jeremy Howe leaves in the back line maybe can be fulfilled by someone like Ash Johnson. I'd love to see Collingwood roll the dice with AJ, see how he goes in the back line. It's against lesser opposition relative to the fixtures that Collingwood have had to deal with in recent weeks. So roll the dice in a game that we're likely to win and play someone like AJ into form, which will do him and Collingwood a world of good in the long run. Liam Ryan has been able to string a couple games together since his uh, injury rose with his hamstring issues over the last year or so. So just keep a tab on him. He hasn't done anything to set the, the world alight just yet, but we know when he's at his best, he's one of the most exciting players to watch. His his ball use is good. He, he can play high up the ground. He can play deep. He's, he's great aerially. So I guess that gives IQ, Isaac Quaino, a great opportunity to play on someone who is just as good at ground level as they are in the air. And Isaac obviously is good within both those categories as well when it comes to when it comes to the ground ball and the aerial contests. Darcy Moore and Billy Frampton should have a bit of an easier job to do on Sunday compared to previous weeks where they've had to face up against players like Peter Wright and Jake Stringer. They've got they've come up against Joe Danaher and Eric Hipwood and they've most recently come up against Kerno and Mackay and Darcy Moore just playing himself further into form and Billy Frampton will take great has, has taken great strides in previous weeks and had no bigger task than playing on Kerno and Mackay throughout different periods of the game last week and I felt he really held his own he lost some contests that he probably would want back but he won some contests that he would take some great confidence from so hopefully with with this week in mind and with with players who, like Oscar Allen and Jake Waterman who aren't available it's important not to be complacent but at the same time, really walk out with your, with your chest out proud and, and do a job because you know you've been able to do it on great opposition. Now it's time to do the same thing with, with lesser opposition. I'm not too sure who comes in for West Coast. Maybe Marich, who was a mid-season rookie last year, pick number one, I believe. Bailey Williams will roll through the forward line. He's a, he's a ruck forward. So those are probably some of the, I guess, matchups that Billy Frampton and Moore will have to deal with. So probably the... Oh, of course, Jack Darling. How can I forget? Um, sorry, he's and he's been playing well. He, he started the year off slow, but he has played well in the last few weeks. So there will be a lot being asked of Jack Darling for this game with, with many of the other key forwards not being available. So he's going he's gonna to want to really prove a point and, and prove that he's worthy of uh, being up there in the upper echelons of the key forward department in the AFL right now. So maybe that's something Billy Frampton and Dyson Moore can get excited about. Leading up to that game on Sunday, guys, I will be doing a pregame show at 11.45 for one hour. I won't do a live stream. I, I have some other commitments outside of that. So no live stream this week. And hopefully in weeks to come, I'm going to start doing postgame shows. So it will be more pregame show, have a break, watch the game in peace. And then after that, we'll, we'll come back and gather our thoughts and we can talk about the game that had just been concluded. So pregame show and a postgame show will be a hopefully a weekly occurrence moving forward. So really looking forward to chatting with you guys on Sunday and, and be sure to join in. Thanks, guys. Bye.